Hey everyone, I hope you are having the most amazing day ever. Uh, we have been a little bit wet here in Bundaberg with the rain. Uh, we were concerned for a little bit that it might flood, um, but thankfully it stopped raining for now and uh, the water has that was pooling has subsided. Um, hopefully that continues to do that and uh, we don't have any more dramas. Um, so I hope you, on the other hand, are having the most amazing day ever. Now, I wanted to come and share today a little bit about holding trauma and our emotions in our fat cells. So for anyone who has ever gone on some type of dietary protocol, uh, what they might find along the way is that they discover things like they're an emotional eater and that they're used to actually eating their feelings as opposed to dealing with their feelings. And this for me is one of the things that I talk about a lot with my um, clients. So in my carnival group, I talk about this a number of times uh, and I think it's always worth a reminder as well. And that is that when we take away all of the foods that are problematic for us, what happens is we're suddenly left with the coping mechanisms or the coping strategies like eating that we have used in the past are suddenly brought to the head and we suddenly start to realize them. And one of the things that I generally will have a conversation about is inevitably someone will fall off the wagon or they'll have a slip up or they'll do something or whatever, which is totally fine. Like you're an adult, you're absolutely allowed to choose to do that. Um, but the difference is you choosing to do it versus you just doing it. Um, not because you've made a conscious decision, but because you've fallen into a pattern or because you've given into sort of a craving or something along those lines. Because ultimately, I don't ever see those things as a failure. I actually see them as an opportunity for growth. And that opportunity for growth comes from that space of uh, seeing what actually comes up when that experience happens for you, what actually comes up? Uh, what are the things that you're thinking and feeling? And one of the questions that I really get my clients to do is ask the question of what was I saying to myself that made it okay for me to do that? And my daughter is just jumping in the back of the car there, so you'll see her moving around. Um, what was I saying to myself that made it okay for that to happen? Um, for me to do the thing that I have said that I don't want to do, or I'm... Um, not doing the thing that I say that I do want to do. So it comes in the forms of a whole bunch of different things. Uh, and essentially it's like going on a quest. And that's what I think about when I'm doing this is going on a quest. Uh, and part of it is that self discovery. And as we start to discover ourselves, what we come up against is the emotions and the um, traumas that we've experienced in our life. And for me, my perspective on health is that it is there to lead you to the place of whole being wellness, where all of you gets to be healthy and well, not just your physical body, but your emotional and your spiritual and your financial and all of you gets to be healthy and well, because that's actually what health is. Health isn't just your physical body not ha being devoid of sickness. Health is your body being in a space of abundance, being at optimal level, having endless energy, well not completely endless, but you know, having that sense of like I've got energy for days uh, and being able to, to enjoy your life and your experiences and your body because it's actually able to do the things that you want it to do versus uh, you're struggling with it because you can't do the things that you want to do, whether that be run with your children or swim or climb or do whatever else. Now, some of that is going to be frustration if you have some type of physical injury where you've been injured and that's not something you're going to be able to repair. But you can reduce some of that inflammation and some of the pain that you may be experiencing from that. So one of the things that I talk about with my clients when we're talking about these is that this is actually a quest and a journey. It's not an end destination. It's not some place that you get to and then that's the end. It's about actually unpacking and discovering yourself. And as we release things like our fat cells, we then also start to release things like the toxic emotions and the trauma that those fat cells were holding. So this is a bit of an analogy that I like to give to my clients so that they can understand or get a sort of a visual image of how it works. Excuse me, I've got a bit of hair in my face. Okay, so imagine that this AirPod case 
is some type of toxin. Now this works on both the physical and the emotional level. So from a physical level, imagine this is some mercury. You've had some dental fillings and you've got mercury in your body. If it's a trauma that you have been through or an experience that you've been through where you created some meaning around it, like, um, you know, something happened with somebody and then something else happened after that and you put the two together and you created some meaning that made it bad or may it mean something negative about yourself. So this is the trauma or this is the pain or this is the wound from that meaning that you gave that scenario of what happened. Now, one of the ways that your body helps to protect you and keep you safe is to encapsulate this in a fat cell. So imagine my hands are a fat cell and inside of there is that toxin that our body is keeping us safe from. So that toxin can be an emotional one and it could be a physical one. Uh, and so it's there keeping us safe. Now, if we go through an experience where we're like, right, we're gonna, we're gonna lose a heap of weight. What we do when we do those protocols of losing a heap of weight, so things like the um, HCG protocol, a low calorie protocol, um, anything where we are forcing our body to actually release those fat cells. What we're actually doing is we're forcing these fat cells open. Now this happens in pregnancy as well. So in the first five, first 14 weeks of pregnancy when HCG is predominantly the hormone that's keeping your baby in, in where it needs to be, um, that HCG actually releases these fat cells and it puts them into your bloodstream. And so it happens in pregnancy, which is why women can be seemingly really emotional and we call it oh they're just being hormonal well actually no it's because they're releasing a lot of uh toxins as well and so it forces that open and now we've got our toxin here that is ready to run wild now this is what is one of the challenges when it comes to uh dieting per se when and that whole idea of willpower so one of the challenges is that as this toxin is released, if we are not nourishing ourselves emotionally, physically, spiritually, what will happen is that this will then rear its ugly head and it will either go lodge itself somewhere else or it will drive us to the point where we give in to some type of craving some type of thing that's not going to be good for us that we don't actually want uh, and then so that we can encapsulate and fat again and that's what we would call emotional eating where the emotion has come up and we're shoving it down because we're not feeling it and we're encapsulating it in fat and keeping it stuck and keeping it somewhat safe um, air quoting safe there because it is actually still detrimental to us. It's not healthy to us. It's not creating a great healthy environment for us. And it starts to then create something else, which is this story of I'm useless. I can't even do it. I don't have any willpower. Um, all of those types of things as well. But really all it is, is that there's been some emotion that has come up. And if we lean into it, and this is the beauty of it, is of any healing journey is if we lean into it and we ask the question of like, what is that about? What happened? Uh, was that actually about me? Is the, what was the meaning that I gave that? Is the meaning that I gave that even true? And could I give myself something different? And be willing to see the scenario and the situation as something different or as meaning something different. So I can, I can share that within my own life, there has been a number of scenarios in which I thought I was bad because somebody said something to me or somebody did something to me and I made that mean that I was garbage, that I was trash, that I was whatever. But actually when we sit down and we give ourselves the space the opportunity, we can work with a coach, whatever works for us, get into our journal and we actually allow ourselves to pour out the feelings, pour out how we saw the event, what we, what meaning we gave that situation, etc, etc. And then ask the question or say the statement of, please show this to me, I'm willing to see it differently. God, angels, universe, whatever it is that you, you say, for me it's God. God please show me this differently. I'm willing for you to show me 
more than what I could see previously. And in those moments, that's where we can start to see that a lot of those situations actually weren't about us. So the abuser wasn't abusing us because of us. The abuser was abusing us because of who they were. And unfortunately, as a young person, we tie that to the value and the meaning of us because that's how we operate. That's how we learn, uh, how we've learned to do that in the world. In our egocentric thinking, it is all about us. So it must be that I am a bad person for somebody to do something like that to me. I am a, I am worthless. I am useless. I have no value. I am unlovable. I am unworthy. I am not enough. All of those things that we, we give that meaning when actually the situation was never about us. It was actually about the person perpetrating the abuse or perpetrating the trauma. Uh, most of the time, that's what is happening when they're, you know, putting something upon you like that, then it's more likely that it's saying something about them. And unfortunately, we have twisted it to mean something about us, which is not great and not healthy and not good for us. And that's where we create these toxins that then get stuck in our body, especially if we don't have um, a group of people around us. So whether it be our parents, whether it be our family group, whether it be some type of other group that has somebody actually help you start to think through those scenarios and those processes and actually ask those questions. What is it? What did you take away from that? What did you make that mean? And is that actually the truth? Because somebody who treats you like garbage probably actually feels like garbage themselves. And it's one of their ways of projecting how they're actually feeling about themselves onto other people. So if I feel like garbage, you should feel like garbage too. And I'm going to make sure that you do feel like garbage. Like that's kind of the, the attitude of it, which actually does not mean that you are the garbage. Doesn't mean you're the garbage at all. But the work is unpacking that. And as we unpack that, starting to heal and reclaim who we are and the parts of ourselves that we've shut down because we believed these things to be true about ourselves. We believed these things to be what we, what, who we actually are and our value and, and we've connected ourselves with those. And so for me, when I'm thinking about, you know, for me, I'm doing carnival, you could be doing anything. It works with gaps, it works with keto, it works with HCG, it works with whatever protocol you're actually using to help you with your health. Inevitably, you'll hit some speed bumps and those speed bumps are things like cultural. So there might be some cultural uh, things that you're used to. There might be some social ones where um, you've got some social kind of eating and bullying um, in regards to if you don't eat or some just like that's the other thing like teasing like you know you should be eating what I'm eating um, you're missing out blah 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 all of that type of like joking jokingness that we tend to do ribbing especially in Australia ribbing um, each other um, some so some cultural stuff some social stuff and then it comes back to the emotional stuff especially um, more so for women where we've got the emotional eating men do it too but it's you know it's not as prominent for them for them it's stress stress tends to be the big thing that is driving uh, their things like their weight gain and so for them when we're unpacking the emotions it's unpacking the stress in their life what have they been stressing about and do they need to stress about it is it actually their responsibility is it not their responsibility if it's their responsibility could we be doing it better uh, all of those types of things and so the journey of healing your body whatever way you choose to do that is one of also healing the emotions and that's where people struggle is that they have learned to shove their emotions down with food because food is not judging you like if you tell somebody how you're feeling they could judge you and it's very risky especially as you start to become truthful about how you're thinking and feeling and when you say what you what's really happening and what you really feel, then you risk the space of being really vulnerable and somebody else uh, not, not receiving that. So I'll give you a quick scenario on that. So I remember um, not that long ago, I was having, having this thought process of sometimes I have been mean and nasty to my husband. Like I've been snappy. I've said things that I know would hurt him or would upset him. 
uh, and I've done it out of I've been callous and if I really sit back and reflect what was actually happening was that I was in a place of stress or I was in a place of worry and I was feeling unloved or um, feeling you know feeling like I was not enough and instead of communicating those feelings to him like actually saying hey honey right now I'm feeling really stressed I'm anxious I'm concerned about dot 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 could you maybe just like hug me could you maybe just like spend some time with me chatting uh, maybe could you do this and actually telling him how I wanted to be loved through that moment and giving him the opportunity to do that instead of doing that I was doing what majority of people do which is bite out snap out uh, and actually attack and do the do the guessing game of like you should be able to figure out what's going on which is like not fair it's totally not fair but actually saying to him I am feeling this way I'm feeling unlovable right now I'm feeling like you don't love me or that I'm not worthy or blah 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 like whatever the feeling is there is always the risk of him going yeah that's true which is scary, which is why we don't do it, because it's scary to say those things. But the risk is actually very much worth the, the cost of that, because the risk in actually saying those things and being truthful around those things actually provides you with an opportunity of growth and an opportunity to develop your relationship even more, to bring some honesty to it and to be honest to your inner child, that little person that's still living inside waiting for you to stand up and battle for them. Uh, it's bringing some trust into that relationship and the truthfulness means that you actually do provide an opportunity for your partner to fulfill that request and to love you in the way that you're asking for in that moment in time versus the guessing game that they they're never gonna win they're never gonna win that guessing game uh, because they can't read your mind so that is what I wanted to share today remember that the healing journey is one of multi dimensions in the sense that we've got the emotional physical spiritual taking place and it was never designed to be that you only just looked at your physical health there was always some emotional connection there as well if the physical health is out of balance the emotional health is out of balance and you know is it the chicken or the egg which one came first it doesn't really matter because both get to be healed both get to be healthy and well and that's the point of going on the journey of doing something that might seem completely ridiculous or completely challenging or really hard for you at this moment in time it's about that place of self-discovery learning about who you are healing the wounds that are inside of you and letting them go so that you actually have the ability to move forward into your future with a lots of abundance and energy and growth all right that's it for me today I hope you have the most amazing day ever I hope this, this rain stops uh, and I can enjoy the rest of my day without worrying that we're going to get flooded. All right, that's it for me today. Bye for now. See you next time. See you later.